Welcome to the Non Inkables podcast. This is podcast number five. So that's pretty exciting. It's been about a month since I started. The major news this week was that there will be no more Pixel Born support after June 16th, 2024. So, Pavel, the person who created Pixel Born, posted in the Discord that he was contacted by Disney representatives and was advised that, quote, Disney has intellectual property rights in the Disney Lorcana cards and that Disney has requested Pixelborn to respect these rights by not copying the cards or in any way suggesting an affiliation with Disney, end quote. And so, per Pavel, the support for Lorcana for Pixelborn will stop before June 16th, 2024, so unclear how soon that will be, which is really kind of sad. I feel like Pixelborn was a good way for everyone who did not have access to cards or people to play with to play, basically from the comfort of their own home online, and also allowed a way for people to play who can't afford the cards or the cards aren't available in their country etc and to enjoy the game and i feel like pixelborn is a major component in what popularity of lorcana in general i think that this change will definitely affect how the meta develops i think right now because of pixelborn online play people are able to play many many games and play with many different people and then there are people who streams so you can watch other people's streams and see what they're playing and so therefore have meta that changes quite rapidly and also is very dynamic and i think once pixelborn i think when pixelborn is no more the meta will probably move a lot slower and when you go to challenge events, it may be more of a surprise of what actually shows up in terms of decks to play. I think this will also affect, obviously, the people who stream Pixelborn and they may move on to other games or they may try to stream like a live game, but it's not the same. I think it's harder to see the cards and it's harder to set up specific you have to have specific people you could play in real life i think it'll also affect obviously people like taya beastie who has kind of built a business around pixelborn and running these tournaments she just started leader of the pack i think it's pretty new in the last few weeks and it's based in pixelborn where if you win 10 games in a row you can win something like a booster box so that obviously will need to be done some other way so kind of unfortunate. Hopefully Disney will come out with their own version, which I think they will. Although I don't know if they are ready yet to publish it anytime soon, like maybe later in the year, but probably not immediately. It'll probably be more aesthetic and Disney looking because I feel like Pixelborn right now is very much like Android looking versus apple looking how like everything in apple is like rounded corners and pretty and i feel like that's disney's vibe whereas pixel born reminds me more of like magic cards from what i've seen of magic cards so yeah that is the big news for this week in terms of lorcana news in this past week since the last podcast i did release a short video about the rules of villainy which is featured on some of the cards i also went to I also went to several tournaments over the course of the weekend weekend. So on Thursday, I went to another sealed tournament at Victory Point Cafe. And since it was my second time there, I got a pin. So I got the Kita pin. So now we have both the Madame Mim Dragon as well as the Kita pin. The sealed tournament had actually quite a few people. So the one we had the week before only had six people, I think. And then this one had like 12 people it was super fun my deck did horribly <laughs> i think i'm still working out how to build a deck with synergies and also i think some of it is just luck and i once again did not draw very good or useful cards but nevertheless it was very fun then on friday then on Friday, I also kind of last minute went to a draft 
tournament at NorCal TCG. I have never done draft before, <laughs> so this was a first for me. I literally watched a YouTube video on how draft works and read an article in the parking lot right before showing up. We unfortunately only had four people, and so kind of a small tournament. I think it was graduation for many people's kids, so they were busy. And we, it wasn't, I guess a standard draft, usually you open up six packs of the current set. So for this one, we did f one pack from each set. So one pack of first chapter, one pack of Floodborne, one pack of Inklands, and one pack of Ursula's Return. And yeah, definitely a exercise in deck building and how to make decks. I think overall my record was not good. So I went 0 2, 0 2, and then 2 1. I know one of the one of the games I just got murdered because my opponent had a Chernabog. And I think in general my deck I was so afraid of not having enough one drops and two drops that I, I think I had too many and I didn't have enough things higher up like five drops and six drops and that really hurt me in the long run so you know a good learning experience for next time yeah it's very difficult <laughs> and Brian actually didn't go with me to that draft tournament because he wanted to kind of fine-tune his deck for the Saturday 10k Ursula's Return which is the last tournament that Taya Beastie is holding because of Pixelborn going away and so he was testing a green steel deck and then I had been testing both Ruby Amethyst and Ruby Sapphire and I ended up just deciding to play Ruby Amethyst because that is kind of the one that I'd played a lot of and so I felt the most comfortable with it and so let's go over the results of that tournament so I played a Ruby Amethyst deck that had basically all four of so super consistent and was focused a lot on card draw the tournament had 286 people total there was nine rounds of swiss and my prediction for the tournament in terms of meta was that i was going to play a lot of emerald steel and a lot of ruby sapphire in the end not super true so i ended up playing one emerald steel deck two ruby sapphire decks and then two sapphire steel one ruby amethyst one amber ruby one amber steel and one emerald amber amethyst so a lot of different combinations i would say so very very interesting so the first game i played was against a ruby amethyst deck and the first game i went first and i double queens castled them and won and then the second game i also won the second game i played ended up being somebody who plays pretty high i lost both games they were playing sapphire steel and the first game they went first and they were able to basically ink their whole hand ramp and then play a whole new world and my note was where is my b prep and then the second game was actually very close i had a goat fox which would have had me win and then they got a whole new world did and then they had just enough ink because they had two fishbone quills out to tomatoa and dime and so it was super super close that actually was a very exciting game the third round i played another sapphire steel deck the first one i won and i put double goaded them the second game i lost due to lucky dime <laughs> the third one i finally played an emerald steel deck the first game i lost i had no cards and no lore i wrote sad face it ended up being three points versus three lore versus 20 lore and the second one oh and then the first one the person had two diablos <laughs> and i was I, i'm still quite i'm still a little unsure of how to approach emerald steel when i play my ruby amethyst deck like do i immediately brawl the diablo do i wait a turn do i draw cards do i not draw cards and that one i experimented with not drawing cards even when i was able and that was not the right move the second game i brawled his first diablo he played a second diablo and i top decked a second brawl and brawled that diablo and then he had a third diablo and then had double bucky so there was nothing i could do it was all downhill from there the third game no that's one two three four the fifth round i played a ruby sapphire deck the first one game i went first i won 
I think I just aggressively quested. The second game, I went second and I won by doing a double queen's castle. And then they didn't see their harem for a while. And then when they finally did, I brawled it. And I wrote, then I brawled it, haha. Which I think when I was testing out Ruby Sapphire is something that would happen to me commonly where I would not see the harem and then I wouldn't have any card draw. And then I was in a pickle. The next round I played an amber ruby deck that was basically like play a wounded character heal with either Julieta or Rapunzel and I lost both of those games the first game I didn't have a one or two drop to play and they had I think all four of their piglet pirate captains and so it was super aggressive and I died the second game hilariously they played two Mufasas. I killed one Mufasa. It brought back an injured Mulan. I killed the second Mufasa. It brought back a Julieta that healed the injured Mulan that I just brought back with the first one. So then they got cards, which, I mean, I thought it was funny. My opponent was like, oh, not that great. Or like, not a coincidence. Not super unheard of. I don't know. He didn't seem very impressed. I thought it was hilarious that that happened. Whatever. And then the next round, I played an Amber Steel deck. The first one he was able to get a fill out onto the board and played a bunch of like low cost heroes. And then the second game I won because I brawled every single fill I saw. And then the next second to last round, I played another Ruby Sapphire deck. And the first game I could have won, but I misplayed. So I should have, it was towards the end. And I think I was very close to being lethal. And I should have put out all my character or three out of the four characters I had in my hand so that the next turn I could win but i was scared that he had another b prep and so i only played two of them and then that gave him enough time to win and then the second game i lost because i think he had like a tamatoa which i got rid of but then he had a bell and then two lucky dimes and yeah nothing i could do and then the last game by this time i was just like i don't even want to play anymore i played an emerald amethyst deck and it was just very aggressive and i lost because i didn't know how to deal with those and since then i have practiced more with my deck and used um, actually a different deck i'm using one that was one of the winning ones i think we got second place in this competition and so i think i know more how to deal with emerald amethyst although i'm still trying to work out how to deal with emerald steel so in the end i placed 111th with 28 points and eight wins brian placed 106th with 29 points and nine wins and then our friend tyler also played he is one that we play like in real life and my goal is to one day beat him he's very good and he placed 25th with 40 points and 12 wins so so I feel like so proud of him. He did so well. Okay, so since then, I have just been testing a bunch of different decks because we are going to SCG Con in Vegas this weekend. So I know a lot of people are going to Chicago, which is partly why we're going to SCG Con. We're like, oh, maybe a lot of people will be at Chicago and then there'll be less good people at SCG Con. And so I've been trying out a lot of different decks. I tried out a red-blue deck which I kept running into the problem where I didn't see Hiram, so I didn't have any cards. And then I tried a blue-green deck, apparently, and I have notes of, like, I lost because they had two Cogsworths, and then my giant Tinkerbell was useless, <laughs> and I didn't like that. I tried a yellow-green deck, and I won one and lost the other but i don't think i really liked it and then i tried a steel mufasa deck which i also didn't like and then i tried a amethyst steel deck and that one i feel like it was like a 50 50 win or lose and some of it was that i didn't play correctly and then other parts yeah i think some of it was just i didn't know how to pilot the deck and then I moved on and then I tried a what is this a purple green deck and it was okay uh, I think I played some weird off meta decks against some weird off meta decks so I wasn't really sure if it was working or not 
or purple gray, sorry. So purple steel deck. And then I tested that a bunch and I would say was doing pretty well. Although I feel I was trying. Oh, so then I tried out the Artibax Amethyst Steel deck and I was doing pretty well with it. Although I feel like sometimes if it got too late in the game, there was not much I could do, which is similar to how I felt when I was playing Emerald Steel. And then since then, I've been, today mostly, I've been testing out a Ruby Amethyst deck because I feel like this is the deck that I like to play and that I am good at playing because I played it in set two and some in set three. And I've always loved Amethyst as an ink color and also Ruby because I like to attack. And so I think this is probably my deck and I feel like it's always just super consistent and I really like it. And I've been doing pretty well. So of the games that I've lost that I've been practicing, um, one of them was a misplay on my part. I just didn't count correctly. And then another one I accidentally brawled. I brawled at Pegasus and I should have waited for the Diablo. I've been trying to keep records of the different ink color combinations that I've been playing and any notes that I could learn from. I did want to actually record some of my videos, but it made my whole computer run very weird and choppy. And so I gave up on that pretty fast, but I do think it is important to think back after the game is done to see where you could have maybe changed what you did or seen where you misplayed. Because I think in general, if you're using a deck that somebody else made and won with, you know that that deck is good. It's just how you pilot it. And so you're just working on piloting better. And yeah, so in general, I think for set for the SCG con this weekend, I'm going to be playing Amethyst, Ruby Amethyst. Although I'm still kind of fine tuning the deck list because I think like, for example, I was using the one from the 10 K and I think that I would prefer an additional be prepared and one less be King undisputed just because I think it's more useful. I think feel like most of the decks I play end up with many characters and the Be King Undisputed just isn't enough in those cases and I want the full board clear. So yeah, so that is what I have in terms of what has happened this past week. Next week upcoming, we pretty much just have the SCG Con in Vegas over the weekend. We are going to try to compete in basically every little con tournament they have. So they have one the day we arrive on Friday, and then there is another one on Saturday and another one on Sunday. And so the goal is to compete in all of them and win. <laughs> and of course, I will update you guys on the next podcast about how that goes. In terms of the YouTube channel, this week I'm planning to post a pretty long video about Encanto. So I wanted to post about the Sing Together songs, and then I got kind of in a deep rabbit hole when I was looking at the look at this family card and I was like you know what I should just make an Encanto video and so I will be posting a video about all of those cards and I did rewatch Encanto for it so that my knowledge was fresh and so look out for that I'm not sure when it will be posted probably sometime in the middle of the week definitely before we go to Vegas as always, thanks for tuning in. This has been the fifth episode of the Non-Inkables podcast. Let me know any comments you have and the other things you would like me to talk about. And as always, keep shuffling and hopefully you don't end up with a whole handful of non-inkables like me. All right, bye. <music>